I'm about to whip somebody's ass. Oh, I'm about to whip somebody's ass. Oh, if you don't leave me alone, you're going to have to send me home. Because I'm about to whip somebody's ass. No matter what the technical difficulty is, this man is a professional. He goes all the way. What you represent to them is freedom. What we've got here is failure to communicate. With an extremely great conservative commentator. Classify my ass. Government is another way to say better than. Well, this is Jersey Joe for uh, the Reverb Comic Sense Show. Want the backheads to give you a blessing? 8 p.m. on shrmedia.com. And welcome to the Reaver of Common Sense. I'm your host, Jersey Joe. Oh, again, not woken up, not ready for everything. Oh, well, it seems our guest is a little late calling in, so we will go on as normal. <clears throat> So, sources say uh, a vocal supporter of Sanctuary Cities on a short list to be the next head of Border Patrol. A former San Francisco police chief and vocal supporter of a Sanctuary City policy is on a short list of candidates to become the new chief of the Border Patrol, according to sources. As police chief, Heather Fong shielded illegal immigrants, including aliens who committed crimes from deportation <clears throat> it just seems like an oxymoron that a police chief is shielding i thought that was co called corruption <clears throat> in contrast it is the job of the u.s border patrol to catch and deport all illegal immigrants including those with a criminal history Oh, she's going to have quite a little uh, conflict of interest. If they bring a police chief in for political purposes, based on the sanctuary city models, that politicized the job. And I think it completely undermines credibility and morale in the organization. House Committee on Homeland Security Chairman Mike McCall, Republican, Texas. If you have someone who is advocating for sanctuary cities, that's the opposite side. They welcome these illegal immigrants to stay in the country. And so I think it's a cross-purpose with the mission itself. Following, according to Border Patrol, DHS, and Capitol Hill sources, is one of several candidates to replace current chief Mike Fisher, who announced his resignation last month. So there, it, I just on um, another one of those articles that make you uh uh you would think they made it up. You would think they had to have made this up. There is no way they could have this. This is real. Heather Fong oversaw a sanctuary city, which is directly contrast to our mission. Her appointment would be for her appointment would be for political purposes, and the trust of the men and women of the Border Patrol and DHS and CP CBP leadership would be lost. During a five years as a chief of San Francisco Police Department. Fong refused to cooperate with ICE, telling reporters in November 2008, we do not cooperate with ICE when they go out for enforcement of immigration violations of law. 
She should have been removed right there. Removed. Thank God she got voted out. But now she might be heading up. Uh, when will this nightmare ever end? Uh, when will it end? 436 days to be exact is when this nightmare will end. Uh, it's, it's just a few months earlier, she appeared in a public service campaign telling illegal immigrants they were welcomed in the city and promoting San Francisco's sanctuary city policy on TV, radio, poster, and brochures in five language. Bong said illegal immigrants had nothing to fear under her watch. San Francisco is committed to providing safe access to public service to our community. Was that also, you know, safe access to murder your own citizens? The ones you're supposed to be protecting? She should have been filed. There should have been uh, charges filed against her. Plain and simple. Still trying to get my first cup of coffee in me. Man, they're going to come up with a way to like IV coffee. Democrats debate Clinton vice president pick. Democrats are debating their party's vice president candidate months before the February 1st Iowa caucus. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is still vying for her party's nomination against Senate Bernie Sanders. Just, just saying the guy's name. Ugh, it's like Mr. Pervert himself. Feel the burn. Feel the burn. It's the only way I get touched. The former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley, but her supporters on Capitol Hill are already weighing who should join the overwhelming Democratic favorite on the ticket. Uh, overwhelming. Uh, I don't know about that. Well, she's, she's on the Democrat side. She is the overwhelming so far. She was overwhelming in 07, 08. Lawmakers are seeking a pick who would offer a balance when it comes to age, race, gender, and regional consideration. Housing and Urban Development Secretary Julio Castro is a favorite. His backers think the 41-year-old would give the Democrat ticket a youthful face and help the party with Hispanics. But he's hardly alone, and other Democrat floated possibilities that included Senator yep, Elizabeth Warren, Democrat from Massachusetts, Department of Agriculture's USDA Secretary Dom Vilsack and even the current Vice President Joe Biden. <laughs> I want it. I got to look that up tonight. I wonder if there's ever been a um, Vice President that has been there through two. Like, okay, he sat through one. Well, two terms technically with Obama. And then if he, let's say, ran with Hillary and God forbid she won. That just sent shivers down my spine. Um, But I'm wondering if there's ever been a vice president that has done that before and successfully uh, succeeded. The wide-ranging options highlight the importance to Democrats of making the right choice in a presidential race where they're trying to maximize turnout in order to keep the White House, win back the Senate, and take a big bite out of the Republican historic majority in the House. Clinton, 68, is a household name vying to become the nation's first female president. Yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. She just, she just wouldn't care about that. She just wants to screw us over. She's done. 
Time after time. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, Missouri protesters try to block student reporting reporter from taking photos. So the students want their rights upheld. They want all these rights, which they should have. But then they want to block freedom of the press. Freedom of speech for this gentleman. I still think that they caved to these kids. Now, every time they think they want something, all they have to do is do these little protests in America, and we're going to give in because that's what we've been doing. We have been folding You got to stop giving in to these kids. We're not teaching them anything. We're not making them better people. And this isn't. Uh, it, it's just breaking news. Justice Department asked Supreme Court to review an appeals court ruling blocking Obama's immigration action. Uh, he still cried about that. Just in case you don't know, when he did his little um, executive order, whatever you want to call it, uh, executive... Um, oh, shnikey. Memorandum. He, he, you know, there's a Texas court that said, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. They blocked it because there's going to be a lawsuit going through on him that says it's unconstitutional. Uh, he wants it to still go into effect. The judge said, um, no, because this would, if the ruling went against him and this uh, executive memorandum, uh, then there would be a lot of people that have already been giving citizenship and now they're going to get it taken away the judge said no we're not going to hand him out just yet even though documents are showing that he's still going to do it against orders which shows how much he cares about the law shows how much the democrats care about the law bupkis so now um you know, it's going up the chain, and everybody knew it was going to happen. They're asking the Supreme Court to look at it. But these Missouri protesters, it's not that there's no action being done. It's not that they're the minority at this school either. Um, it's that the president of the school did not act fast enough for them on the charges of that there was some... Um, uh, racism going on and some incidents that had happened. Um, they wanted instant revenge, not justice. It was instant revenge they wanted. Now, if those incidents did happen, it, you give it time for an investigation to happen. These things don't happen overnight. Sometimes they take longer than we care. But a filmed confrontation between protesters at the University of Missouri and a student journalist went viral Monday afternoon after the demonstrators, including two university administrators, attempted to block the student from shooting photographs on a public quad. If you are in a public area, you do not have the right to privacy. You do not have the right not to be photographed. You have no expectation of privacy in a public area. And these two university administrators should be removed immediately. They should be a, uh, suspended. They should be made to resign like the president was. The confrontation appears to show the protesters engaging in a clear violation of the First Amendment since the incident occurred in a public space on the campus of a public university. The video was posted on YouTube shortly after university 
of Missouri System President Tom Wolf resigned following a week of protests over his perceived lack of response to a series of racially charged incidents. The Los Angeles Times reported that Tim Tai, a 20-year-old senior at the university working on a freelance assignment for ESPN, went to the protesters' tent encampment. Protesters' tent encampment on public property. To document their reaction to the news. Shortly after Tay arrived and began to take photos, the pro protesters formed a ring around the encampment and began to push away the assembled media. Tay refused to budge. I have a job to do, Tay told one demonstrator on the video. I'm documenting this for a national news organization. This is the First Amendment that protects your right to stand here and mine. Well, it was responded by, you do not have the right to take our photos. Well, little uh, demonstrator, yes, they do. You are in a public area. I just don't understand it. And one school, and then, oh, and then they started chanting, hey, hey, ho, ho, reporters have to go. Yeah. It, it, it's just, one school administrator identified as a Jana Basler, the school director of Greek life and leadership, is seen on the video confronting Tay when he asks her name. Basil says, "I'm a concerned citizen or concerned student, 1950," a reference to the name of the Amer African American group leading the protest. So you not only have the students involved in this, now you have school directors, school administrators involved in it. Why are they not suspended from their job? Why are they out there not doing their jobs and getting paid? Near the end of the video, another adult identified as an assistant professor of mass media, Melissa Click, tells another reporter, you need to get out of here before asking other protesters for help. You want to help me get this reporter out of here, she asks, adding as the video ends, I need some muscle over here. Sounds like that's not a protest. Uh, they want their rights. They sound like little children. They want their rights, but nobody else is allowed to have their rights. If there was racism, if the accusations are true, they should be dealt with. It should be dealt with by the school, not the mob. And that's what's going on. We now have in this country where mob rules. We've seen it time and time again over the last seven years. This mob rules mentality. All they have to do is stand up, protest, riot, threaten. And everybody starts laying down. Tell you, if I did it, they'd, they'd, yeah, right. You know where you can go. I find it ironic that particular, particularly faculty members would resort to those kind of things for no good reason. I understand students who are protested and want privacy, but they are not allowed to push and assault our photographers, our student photographers. Tom War. Hover, the executive director or editor of the Columbia, Missouri, and University newspaper told the Times he was pretty incensed about Ty's treatment. 
It was not immediately clear what action Ty or <coughs> Warhover would take in light of the incident. And what's this world coming to? We are heading down a direction that is not looking good. Not looking good at all. But, all right, it's time that time again. Time for our break. But remember, every Monday through Friday, noon to 1 p.m., you can catch Reaver Common Sense, hosted by Jersey Joe, right here on shrmedia.com and punditpress.com. You can also catch my show right here on reavercommonsense.com. Every Wednesday night, you have Reaver After Dark, hosted by me, Jersey Joe, and Crash, the Jersey Boys. Every Wednesday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. right here on shrmedia.com. Be right back after these messages. You have been listening to We Were at Common Sense, hosted by my dad, Jersey Joe. are dark. The people are misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation looking for direction needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, Pundit Press Radio, and YouTube through the SHR Media page for a different kind of commentary on the unpleasant blind guy. Because the truth is not always pleasant. Hey, it's Jersey Joe from Reefer of Common Sense, and we have moved to a new night in time. Every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on shrmedia.com, you will catch the Reefer of Common Sense uncensored, unfiltered, and only on shrmedia.com. Your heavens trying everything Your heavens 
Welcome back to the Reaver of Common Sense. I am your host, Jersey Joe. Uh, yeah, it seems our, I don't know what happened, but our special guest it wasn't able to make it today. So oh, we'll just reschedule. It's not nothing a uh, big issue. Uh, so we've gone over the Dems uh, debate, uh, Clinton's vice president pick, um, Went over Missouri's protesters, tried to block a student reporter from taking pictures in a public area. And uh, the ex dep or ex chief of police for San Francisco is now on a short list to be chief for uh, the border security. Doesn't that just make you feel all warm and safe and sign that the person that set up sanctuary cities and helped Kate get murdered is going to possibly be our new head of border security. <sighs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I just... Uh, Exactly. Um, it shows the idiocy and the downward spiral that this country has taken underneath the leadership of this worthless piece of... I'll leave it there. All right. An anti-ethanol group expands a national ad by... I don't know about anybody else, but I hate that stuff in my gas. It seems like it's a filler to take up space in my tank and burns fast as anything so I get less miles per gallon. A group opposing the federal ethanol mandate has extended its advertising campaign against the rule into several corn-growing states. The American Council for Capital Formation, 
a D.C.-based free market group, is hitting the airwaves in Indiana on Tuesday with an ad warning about the environmental effects of the renewable fuel standards. The ad warned warns about ethanol fuels greenhouse gas emission and the mandate impact on food prices. Wait a minute, I thought they said that ethanol fuel was so safe that we needed to switch over to it. I, there's more switching on this environmentally safe crap. It just... It seems whatever one will make them more money is what they back. They're not backing the government or that what's best for the earth and environment. They are backing their pockets. The ad warns about ethanol fuels, greenhouse gas emission, mandates impact on fuel prices. It quotes former Vice President Al Gore. That's not too smart to do. The guy is an idiot. He said he invented the Internet. An environmental advocate who backed off his support for the ethanol rule several years ago. Ain't it? To call him an idiot is a compliment to him and an insult to idiots. After a decade of the government mandating ever increasing volumes of corn ethanol blend in the national fuel supply the results are crystal clear high volumes of corn ethanol worsens the environment can cause severe engine damage and hurts consumers wallets but of course our government does not give a rat's patootie about how bad they are hurting us financially because they've been doing it for seven years now they've been beaten down the middle class, they've been beating down the poor. They've been beating us all down, raising prices on everything because of his idiotic policies. And we actually still have people that back his policies, that think, not think, they're told this is what is going on, and they follow blindly. Anybody with a set of eyes can tell that this country is in a downward spiral. We are financially screwed. And we're getting worse and worse every day. But the Democrats still sit there and lie their backside off and say it's okay. So that they can just get along with Obama. So that they can say how successful his presidency was even though it was a complete failure. Don't tell me <laughs> we're at the lowest unemployment rate. No, we're on the lowest amount of people on unemployment. Yes, doesn't mean those people are back to work. Now, I was told by somebody who I trust very much that says, and he, very, very, very well off person that has um, his own business. And I trust what he says. There's no reason not to. Um, that a lot of companies have cash in reserve and are sitting on it right now. And they're waiting. They're waiting to, for this president to get the hell out of Dodge. As soon as he is out of office, there's going to be a mass hirings. The companies are going to go wild with spending money. They're just waiting for this idiot to get out of office. I have no reason to doubt who told me that. I've heard that a couple other times recently. That companies have the money. They do not trust him. They do not know which way he's taking our country. And they're just waiting for him to get the hell out of Dodge. And then they're going to open the floodgates and start spending, expanding their companies, hiring people. It's after a, uh, after a decade of government mandating ever-increasing volumes of corn 
ethanol blended in the national fuel supply. The results are crystal clear, high volume. Oh, yeah, hurt in our wallet. Um, ACCF Vice President David Banks said in a statement. The group's Indiana ad buy is an extension of its multi-million dollar national campaign, which began running in Ohio, Vermont, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Washington, D.C. last week. It's notable that the group is working against the RFS in Ohio and Indiana, given that both states are in the top 10 nationally in ethanol production. It... These idiots that keep getting in the head of the government and running these agencies should be running a shoebox, let alone these agencies. This global warming cult bull is destroying our country financially. It's destroying the middle class. For what? For nothing. It is not changing anything. Global warming policies are only for one thing. To make the rich richer. And it's funny that it's the left that pushes this. And then claims that the right is out to make itself richer. And then you make these policies. And it makes put so much money in the pocket of the Democrats. It's not funny. $22.2 billion a year is spent in this country. And this is some of the crap they come up with. And who has to pay for it? Us, the people. We pay for it. We pay to get screwed over by this administration and others. It is getting absolutely ridiculous how bad they're screwing us. And it's not even that they're hiding it anymore. At least years gone by, they would hide it and finagle it that it didn't look like it. But now they're outright. Just, eh, whatever. We don't care. As long as the legacy is there. Your legacy is going to go down as the worst president, not as the president that helped his own people, not as the president that brought a country together, not as a president that helped the environment. And the idiocy that the worst enemy we have is global warming. No, you moron. The worst enemy we have Well, we got a list of them because of you now. We have more enemies now than we did when you started. When you promised us that you would make friends with other countries. You would make it so all these countries loved us. Yeah. They love us, all right? They love screwing us over. Period. And you have caused it. These, uh, this is funny, oil groups and some environmentalists have teamed up against the rule, arguing, as ACCF does, that the mandate is hard on combustion engine, raises fuel prices, and actually has a negative impact on the environment. Oh, but the oil companies don't give a shit, I thought. I thought that was a narrative that they pushed. They actually do. Because if you destroy the environment, well, you're not going to have a business anymore. Well, time for a break. Time for me to go bash my head into the wall a few times. Kill off a few brain cells and maybe I can understand how these Democrat and moronic global warming cultists think. Every Monday through Friday, noon to 1 p.m., Eastern Standard Time.
right here on shrmedia.com and punditpress.com. You can listen to the Reverb of Common Sense, hosted by Jersey Joe. You can also catch past shows and his live show on ReverofCommonSense.com. And every Wednesday night, we have the Reaver After Dark, hosted by the Jersey Boys, Jersey Joe and Crash, right here on SHRmedia.com and PunditPress.com. That's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Every Wednesday night, Reaver After Dark. We were a common sense hosted by my dad, Jersey Joe. Listening to the SHR Media Network. In a world controlled by corrupt politicians. You got a business. That you didn't build that. A team of ordinary men emerge from the ashes to give voice to the voiceless and hope to the hopeless. Sackhead Sean. Dude, I'm not saying cow for the stupid pro. Sackhead Clint. All good friends of ours usually show, show up drunk. drunk. Also starring Sako as the producer. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. They are the Sackheads Radio Show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific on shrmedia.com. Times are dark. The people are misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation looking for direction needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, Pundit Press Radio, and YouTube through the SHR Media page for a different kind of commentary on the unpleasant blind guy. Because the truth is not always pleasant. Hey, it's Jersey Joe from Reefer of Common Sense, and we have moved to a new night in time. Every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on shrmedia.com, you will catch the Reefer of Common Sense uncensored, unfiltered, and only on shrmedia.com.
And welcome back to the Reaver of Common Sense. I'm your host, Jersey Joe. Uh, how's everybody doing? Well, we're on the last leg of the show. Uh, it started out kind of slow for me. Then it went and picked the pace up, so that means it got better, at least for me. I hope I pass on some information with this show. Um... Rand Paul, if asked, I'll appear on SNL. It's like the kid that doesn't get picked. Oh, I, I wouldn't mind playing baseball. Yeah, we didn't ask you to play baseball. Oh, come on. Fourth Amendment. Fourth Amendment. Fourth Amendment. Uh, but if asked, I will play. Be a part of SNL. Oh, my God. That is such a desperation act. All right, I, I, I got to find uh, DOJ. It, 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 man, such. Uh, for those, you know, that don't know me, that are getting new. Uh, I was at one point. I was at one point a Rand Paul supporter. Then as he. Um, uh, put in his hat for the candidacy to be a candidate. Um, he instantly became like he instantly got like a Napoleon complex, nasty and uh, picking on, just going after everybody and anybody. Um, he has turned his back totally on the Tea Party. He, he and. That's what got him elected, and that really ticks me off. He used, whether I whether it was the Democrat Party or not, he used them and lied to the people to get elected. He knew he can get elected as a Tea Party member, when in fact he's a libertarian. And there's no problem with being a libertarian, but wear it proudly. Stand up proud. And he doesn't. Uh, Senator Rand Paul... Like fellow GOP presidential candidate, or says like fellow GOP presidential candidate Donald Trump, he's ready to go live from New York. I don't think they want you. They would have called you. They would have contacted you. Um, they've had Hillary. I know that, but it's the people with the high ratings, not two point five. The Kentucky lawmaker says while he hasn't been invited yet to appear on NBC's late night sketch comedy show, he'd be willing to do it. I, just, I, I, I wish I could have been there when he started saying this. I, I would have laughed in his face and it wouldn't have bothered me. I would have laughed in his face. ITK caught up with the White House hopeful days before Trump took a turn guest hosting SNL at a book party in Washington celebrating the release of Fox and Friends co-hosts Brian Kilmeade and Don Yeager's latest tune, Thomas Jefferson and the Tripoli Pirates. Going on SNL, says Paul, helps to show you're human and not a robot. That's why Hillary went out, because there's still lingering doubts, he quipped. <laughs> it, it just, Democrat presidential front runner Hillary Clinton appeared as Val, the bartender, in a sketch last month, but at least one White House contender has balked at making an SNL, SNL cameo. I think the President of the United States is a very serious thing, Republican Ben Carson said in an October interview. I don't even want to bring to begin to put into the lightness of comedy even though paul is a regular on cable news network he doesn't necessarily have the best track record as a late night guest i have been on colbert i was on larry wilmore paul recalled then he added with a grin salone called it the most painful and awkward six minutes in the history of tv yeah i'm sure they'll be banging down your door ron Rand. whatever whichever paul you are so, uh, Air Force is announcing now they're changing, and they may delay the A-10 retirement. The Air Force is considering delaying the retirement of the A-10 Warthog 
attack aircraft for several years, a top Air Force commander said Tuesday, a move that Congress and troops would embrace. Now, this uh, plane has been mothballed, I think one or two times at least, and brought back out. It is very effective for ground wars. Um, it, it's an excellent tank buster. The Air Force has been trying for years to retire the A-10, which provides troops on the ground with close air support in favor of the newer F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. But do, new demands have caused leaders to rethink that plan, says General Herbert Hawk Carlisle, commander of Air Combat Command. We have to retire the airplanes, but I think moving it to the right and starting it a little bit later and maybe keeping around the airplane a bit longer is something that's being considered based on things as they are today and what we see in the future. Carlo told reporters at the Defense Writers Group breakfast. Buddy, 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 buddy. I think if you look at what we'd like to do is probably a couple of squadrons, maybe early, because we have F-16s coming out of the hill, Air Force Base, and we'd like to transition the A-10 to the F-16 and a couple of different places. But I think the majority of it, we would move it a couple of years. Two to three years to the right. Carl Carlisle said factoring into the consideration is a campaign against ISIS, other military commitment, and the slower procurement rate for the replacement F-35. One of our challenges today is capacity. If you look at the demand signal that's placed on the United States Air Force across all the mission areas, the demand signal has gone up. Things have changed a bit. Obviously, we're in Turkey now, which we weren't before the fight against ISIS. It, it, ground troops have been very upset with the announcement of the retirement. Um, this is a plane that has given countless air support and saved countless troops. It's one of the best planes. Like I said, it's been retired several times. But it keeps coming out of retirement. Why? Because it's such a great plane. It uh, I mean, why ground something that is so great? Uh, all right, it is uh, the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II is an American twin-engine straight-wing jet aircraft developed by Fairchild Republic in the early 1970s. It entered service in 76 and is the only Air Force production aircraft designed solely for close air support, including attacking tanks, armored vehicles, and other ground targets. It, it, it has seen a lot of action. Um, let me get down. It's been upgraded several times. Ah. <sighs> These planes have taken a beating, too. And they just keep going. Keep going. On weapons, uh, let's see, it has a 30 millimeter GAU A8A Avenger Gatling type cannon. One of the most powerful aircraft cannons ever flown. It fires large depleted uranium armor piercing shells. And in the original design, the plane could switch between two rates of fire 21,000 or 40. 2,000 rounds per minute. This was changed to a fixed rate of 39, 3,900 rounds per minute. The cannon takes about a half a second to come up to speed. So 50 rounds are fired during the first second. 600 or 65 or 70 rounds per second thereafter. The gun is accurate enough to place 80% of its shot within a 40 foot diameter circle from 4,000 feet while in flight. That is impressive. Ah, the fuselage of the aircraft is built around the cannon. Slightly to the port side. Um, 
It's got uh, air-to-surface missiles. Like I said, this thing has... Uh, let's see. I'm trying to... It's Afghan, Iraq, Libya. It's seen a lot of combat. I'll say the least. I don't want to bore you with all the stuff on it. But like I said, this thing has been retired once or twice and brought out of mothballs. That's how great this is. All right. And that is going to be the show. Remember, every Monday through Friday, you can catch the Reaver of Common Sense right here on shrmedia.com and punditpress.com from noon until 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can also go to my website, <clears throat> reavercommonsense.com. While you're there, on the left-hand side, you'll see a Remember to Follow page and click the Like button. Keep up to date on the Reaver of Common Sense through Facebook. Know when I post new articles or new shows. <clears throat> also, Wednesday nights is Reaver After Dark, hosted by... The Jersey Boys. That'd be me, Jersey Joe, and Crash. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 9 p.m. Right here on shrmedia.com and punditpress.com. All right, everybody. We will see you tomorrow.